He dodged, you son of a... Wow. It's a little harder than... I wonder if maybe the spear would be easier. Ah! Oh, jeez! There you go. Arrow to the knee. Now you can no longer be an adventurer. Sorry, I don't make the rules. No, I think we're going to go with Galaxy unless Defiant is... Actually, Defiant's not too bad. Let's stick with the Galaxy, though. That looks good to me. Okay. go. Gate travel begins. Do you mind? You're interrupting a thing here. Wooden barracks constructed in Mayo. I would normally want to build wooden barracks in the earth rather than in mayonnaise, but you know, construction techniques were a little more primitive back then. You gotta make. Oh, nice! That was awesome! Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Okay, I'm dead. <laughs> First death. I love how expressive they are in this one. The facial animation is so... But I, I'm still kind of tempted to play them. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> this is fine. It's okay. Okay, what do I have to do with this? Uh -huh. 
Oh, I think that was just the thing that delivered the thing for the thing. Gotcha. Now watch a courier show up again. None shall pass. Ah, a red herring. <laughs> Excuse me. That's not what I was expecting. Way to go, Ace. You blundered your way to within range of the pirate's jello gun. You suffocate in an impenetrable block of jello. And now these guys are back. What the hell? There we go. Two for one. That's an excellent idea. When you desperately need all troops available at your side, be sure to lock them in their rooms and force them to use an override that they may. That's a lot of wolves. I'm getting pretty low on oxygen. Let's go to your place. Okay. But finish your trials first. I don't want you to be preoccupied. But... I feel this sudden urge to complete the trials. Quickly. <laughs> uh... What the hell? <laughs> Not what I was going for, Aloy. For a dire. That's what I wanted. Looks like we've maybe got three left. Did I say three? I meant. Uh oh. Auto drive now disabled. I'd better back off. I did not expect it to get the Albion truck. That Why does the Alliance hire pilots with brittle bone disease? You're kidding me. The Korean military has one about me? Oh, absolutely. I heard it myself from a private back on Palavan. All right. Why does the Alliance hire pilots with brittle bone disease? So their Marines can beat someone in hand-to-hand -hand drills. 
Oh my god. Figuring out which side took the rocket. Oh my god, I've never seen that before. That's a What? Handle the fighting. I'll just be here with the looting. Not that the game would ever throw anything really terrible at us. Look over there, a new wolf frog. Ah! Giant Chara spider? What the hell? That's so disgusting. Ooh, I hate it. Examine this air. Oh, so uncivilized. no kidding. You said it, Obi Wan. Uh oh, my aren't you the clumsy one? Because of your inability to walk without falling on your face, your helmet is now riding the elevator without you. You've blown your cover. The Sarians are sure to shoot first and ask questions later. Unknown, they failed to notice my hands. Maybe they won't notice my... What? What? Bespar Essence, the Dok Swords Dwarf, has been found dead completely brain... Good evening, folks, and welcome back to the Library of Lore. Tonight, we're going to be taking a very first look at Kerbal Space Program 2. California, it's really good to see you. How are you doing tonight? I hope everyone is doing well. Let's get over here. There we go. Now, um, I've never tried streaming this game before. Hey, Sketchy, it's going good. We're about to try launching the game. This is early access. It's kind of unoptimized. So I'm going to take a chance here, and I'm going to drop back down to 1080 instead of 4K on my main display. I just can't remember what... I, I loaded the game up earlier, and I went through some of the tutorial stuff. I don't remember what resolution I have the game set. Hopefully, it'll be okay. Let's try launching this. Uh, where's where's Kerbal? Kerbal, where are you? Kerbal, there we go. Kerbal 2. How are you doing, Sketchy? It's really good to see you. Okay. We're going to see if we can land on the moon. Hopefully with a space plane. But I wouldn't mind trying to land on the moon even without a space plane. Oh, okay, that's encouraging. It's picking up the game. All right. How's our settings? Uh, 
blah, 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 graphics. There we go. Oh, okay. Perfect. So it's already playing in 1080. That is beautiful. So let's delete that because that's dumb. And we're going to delete that. And we're going to delete the whole campaign. Oh, I already did. Okay. So let's do normal difficulty. We're going to call this library on stream. We're going to go with the agency flag in colors. That looks good. Might go a little more blue. No, come on. And the accent will go a little darker blue. And we're going to start the campaign. So, like I said, I've done a little bit of the tutorial. Oh, I love this. Can you guys hear okay? Sounds good. You keep confusing this with Astroneer. Very different game. Very, very different game. Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Center. This campus has everything you need to turn your fledgling space program into the stuff of legends. Our engineers have created a training program that will guide you through building and flying your very first rocket. You can go through those lessons here at the training center. If you want to start building right away, the vehicle assembly building is where you want to be. Okay, we're going to actually do the tutorials. The training center is where we go to learn how to build and fly rockets, planes, and rovers. Lessons take place in a simulation, and you can start a lesson at any time, even in the middle of an active flight. When you're done, we'll put you right back where we found you. Okay, space is the place. Build, launch, stage, and land a rocket in a suborbital flight to learn the fundamentals. We all have to start somewhere. How do rockets work? It is indeed. Space is the place. <laughs> Rockets use fuel and engines to create thrust, which propels them forward. When a fuel tank is empty, it is dropped to stay as lightweight as possible, allowing the rocket to go even faster. These tanks, as well as other expendable parts of a rocket, are called stages. Different stages. 
stages do different things. Often the first stage is very powerful with just enough fuel to get the vehicle through the atmosphere. The second stage usually has a low thrust engine that, while not as powerful, is more fuel efficient. After dropping the heavier first stage and leaving the atmosphere, the second stage engine pushes the much lighter second stage to orbital speed. That's asking a lot. <laughs> How's it going, Dova? Tutorial complete. Okay, so we can play now. I'm glad to hear that. So anybody got any big plans for the remainder of the weekend? I hope you've all had a good start to it. Okay. Great. You can also zoom the camera in and out. Nice. Go ahead and pick your favorite view for this launch. Your rocket is ready for launch. Every good launch <coughs> Start the launch sequence by selecting the go button or pressing the space bar and try to ignore the dangerous teetering of the rocket on the launch pad. I went through the tutorials once last night, Crispy, but I haven't actually done any genuine play. doing crispy it's good to see you by the way come on let's move on yes Okay, I think we're good to go on. I've heard mixed things about KPS2. Really? What kind of... It's barely out. How can people have complaints already? Wait a minute. Never mind. This is the internet. Of course they have complaints. I had to... Oh. Okay, um, I, I pretty much had to play it because Ultrasaurus played it for the very first time last night and she had never even played the first game before. I would say the vast majority of gamers don't understand early access. Okay. A command module allows us to control 
control our vessel. As long as there is at least one command module on board, our rocket will be operational. This rocket will use a command pod, which can be manned by a Kerbal, and is located in the pods category. Or multiple Kerbals. It all depends on the crew capacity of the part. For this lesson, we're going to make a small rocket, so we need a small command pod. Great! It doesn't look like much, but it's a promising start. The next thing our rocket needs is a fuel tank. Fuel, or propellant, is an expendable... How about that one? Rocketry Weekly called... Notice the part is once again... Now that's going to look like a rocket. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going too fast. You need an engine. Here at the KSP, we have four different types of engines. Launcher, sustainer, orbital, and deep space engines. So, Britt, now let's add the sustainer engine to the fuel Okay. Excellent. Our rocket is looking pretty great. We just need one final touch. As is, our rocket can absolutely take flight. But if you want our pilot to survive... Not yet, Aaron Lore. How you doing? ...to attach a parachute to the top of their command pod. Do we really need a parachute? I don't know that we need a parachute. Our one Kerbal rocket doesn't weigh much, so we only need an extra small parachute. Let's go with that one. Now, all we need to do is put it on top of the command pod. It won't do as much. Congratulations, you've just built a rocket. Are you sure you haven't done this before? Nope, I've totally never done this before, ever. Rocket-powered golf carts? I've done that lots of times. You know how it is, Reddit's gonna Reddit, that's true. That is true. Yeah, I've been watching Ultra's VOD from last night. It's really fun seeing her go through and get help from chat and do all the things. As you start to build rockets, you'll want to see your designs from other angles. Let's learn how to manipulate the camera inside the vehicle assembly building. They're cheating. I did not put that component in. Uh, oh, middle click. If you want to view your rocket from the top, front, or sides, switch to blueprint mode. You can change the camera's direction by selecting different sides of the view cube. That sounds both good and bad, Aaron Lar. I hope you're recovering quickly and fully. Press the home key to reset to default camera view. Okay. Nice. Now you can get at those hard to reach parts of your rocket. Three minute warning, folks. So we're just gonna go through this quickly. We'll do each of the tutorials and then we're gonna get started doing some weird stuff. Okay. All right, let's go. Wow, that's eating fuel really, really quickly. You've cleared the launch tower and your flight is underway. Let's learn about staging. Rockets are constructed in sections called stages. Each stage is designed for a different part of the mission. When a stage completes Okay. On your right, you'll find the staging stack. It displays all of the functions contained in each stage. Every 
Every time you select the Go button, you'll activate a new stage, starting from the bottom of the stack. Each stage's fuel supply is shown on a bar next to the stage. Your active stage, stage one, still has a little fuel in it. When it goes dry, you'll drop that stage by selecting Go. Okay. Good time to think about that. Okay. All right, Aaron. I'll check it out uh, as soon as I have to take. Ooh. Um, as soon as I have to take a break, which is pretty much right now, actually. So as soon as this part of the tutorial loads in and the talking stops. Okay, and with that, we will continue this in just a moment. I'm going to take a break, and I'll read your message, Aaron Lord, and I'll be back in a couple of minutes. What the hell? Oh my... That had to have been the forged. That's so annoying. I thought I had done some parking jobs in this game. That's the last one. One enemy remains. Please hit. I couldn't defeat it. <laughs> I love it when they knock themselves over. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't even have the new RAM yet, Aaron. Though. I still have to get that taken care of. It's going to have to be replaced. I should probably get on that. I've just had a lot on my plate. 
Okay, your capsule has a lot of momentum. If you're curious how high up you are, take a look at your altimeter. If you're you're so high up, you can see the curve of the horizon. Rocketry involves a lot of waiting between the cool explosions. You can speed up time by selecting the time warp controls at the bottom of your screen. Press the period key or select the second arrow in the time warp controls to activate two times time warp. Check, you're about to start falling back down. Let's slow down and enjoy the view. Great job. You're now a master of time. Try not to use this new power for evil. No promises. Uh, what do you mean, Aaron? Though? Oh, uh, no, one of the sticks is bad. I can get it to recognize 96 gigabytes, but never the full 120, and it's always the same stick that goes. But it's a what lifetime warranty, so it should be okay. Wind resistance will slow down your capsule's descent, but not enough to prevent it from turning into a bunch of tiny capsules when it lands. That's why we've attached a parachute. If you deploy your parachute too early, it'll be torn off. If you deploy it too late, you'll do some unplanned underground exploration. The sweet spot for Kerbin is between 20,000 and 2,000 meters. Okay, you're low enough to activate the final stage that contains your parachute. Hit go to pop your chute. All right, there we go. Nice work. The parachute will trail your capsule for a bit without fully opening. Once you've slowed down enough, It'll open all the way by itself. <laughs> it really does. Now fully deployed and slowing the capsule to a safe velocity. Congratulations! If this were real, you'd find celebratory snacks in the VAB kitchen. Okay, that concludes Space is the Place. So I think that was the longest of them, so this is not going to take a terribly long time to go through all the tutorials, and then we'll get into actual play. Training Center. Missing the ground. The goal of any space agency to be to get to space, right? Build and launch a rocket capable of reaching orbit. Missing the ground. If you want to visit space for more than a couple of minutes, you'll need to get to orbit. An object is in orbit when it's moving sideways so quickly that even as gravity causes it to fall, it keeps missing the ground. As long as that object isn't slowed down by anything, it follows the same path every time it goes around the body it's orbiting. Forever. If that object is a Kerbal, hey, it's Tonberry. that they bring lots of snacks. So since your goal is to move horizontally at a high speed, why not launch sideways? On Kerbin, the atmosphere is like a thick soup. You waste a lot of fuel trying to fly through it horizontally. By launching vertically, you cut through the thickest part of the atmosphere as quick as possible. Most orbital rockets begin tilting toward the horizon soon after they leave the launch pad. This maneuver, called a gravity turn, uses the planet's gravity to turn the ship and reduces the amount of fuel needed to achieve a stable orbit. When launching near the equator, your gravity turns should point toward the east since your vehicle gets a free boost from the planet's rotation. Thanks, planet. Once a vehicle is moving quickly enough that its arc will take it above the atmosphere, it shuts down its engines and coasts to space. Once it nears the top of that arc, the vehicle needs to fire its engines a second time to keep itself from falling back down to the planet. Doing this turns that arc into a nice big circle. Congratulations! You've missed the ground. And you're halfway to flying.
They do, Glader. They do. The tutorials are actually really, really good. I've gone through them once last night after I got the game. Hey, Mr. Soggy Roman. Oh, it's going pretty good. How are you doing? I hope everyone's had a good weekend so far. When you're a rocket, it's often easiest to work top to bottom, tailoring each stage to carry the weight of everything above it. To give you a head start, I've already placed an upper stage, perfect for maneuvering in the vacuum of space. It could use another, more powerful stage to push it up to space from Kerbin's surface. Let's turn this vehicle into a multi-stage rocket. Anytime we intend to drop an empty stage after using all of its fuel, we connect it to the stage above it using a decoupler. A decoupler contains explosive bolts that, when activated by a staging action, eject the attached stage away from the rest of the vehicle. We like explosives. Add that decoupler to the bottom of your rocket. We need to attach a larger, more powerful lower stage to the bottom of your rocket. To keep things simple, I've whipped up a new lower stage in another workspace. You can bring saved vehicles and other sub-assemblies into an in-progress workspace by merging it. Let's merge my lower stage into this VAB workspace. Been great though, uh, got through the first fourth or so of an Elden Ring randomized co-op, oh my god. See it and you must equip a challenge run with a friend, very nice, that seems awesome. Yeah, they're keeping it simple for now, Mr. Soggy Roman. They will teach you about the ellipse and how to correct for it and all that later on. I think you saw you also played some Star Citizen recently. I did. It was actually a huge amount of fun. I have some really neat clips from that one. Oh, did you actually get it, Mr. Soggy Roman? Congratulations. I hope. Okay. Out in the real world, this list would show all of your saved workspaces. Here in the simulator, I'm only showing you the lower stage you need to merge. Now that the lower stage has been merged into your current workspace, you can see it next to the upper stage. Select the lower stage and connect it to the decoupler beneath the upper stage to create a single two-stage rocket. Perfect! Merging is a very powerful tool. Anytime you want to reuse a particular booster, lander, or other element from an existing rocket, merging saves you the hassle of making the same thing over and over. Okay. Nobody's figured out how to just go out and buy one of those yet, Aranar. Very nice, Mr. Soggy Roman. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, with uh, Star Citizen, I only catastrophically exploded a couple of times. I did have a few other catastrophic collisions, but they Space weren't actually explosive. Need an extra boost. In a rare case of rocket scientists naming something well, these additional rocket engines are called boosters. Boosters are attached to the sides of a vehicle to keep them out of the way of the main engines. Solid fuel rockets make great boosters. They produce a very high thrust for a short time. Let's attach some boosters to the sides of your vehicle. I'll keep hoping though someday someone will tell me where to get one. And if you find out, please let me know. We'll start by attaching four radial decouplers that will eject the spent boosters when they're empty. To make sure that these decouplers are evenly spaced and aligned with one another, you'll be using the symmetry tool. Great! Now when you place a part on one side of your rocket, three more evenly spaced duplicates will appear around the rocket. Go ahead and add four radial decouplers. Okay. Good! Now attach it as shown. Perfect! Now you've got four radial decouplers exactly where they need to be. Let's attach those solid fuel boosters. 
Scroll down and select RT-10, Hammer, Solid Fuel Booster. Okay, so this is a small size solid fuel booster. Since you're still in 4X symmetry mode, simply attach this booster to one of the decouplers you just placed. That will attach copies of... Great job! You've finished your orbital rocket. You can symmetrically place up to eight parts at once. A feat that could until now only be achieved by certain sea creatures. Did you fall through the geometry of your ship while in quantum? No, that's never happened. Hey, Watai, how's it going? Buying a life is actually very simple. After all, a dog has a life and buying a dog can be done in most cities. Wow. Fair, though. That's, that's a point. I managed to explode inside the hangar the first time I tried to take off Glader because I realized once I took off that I didn't know how to ask for launch clearance and so the doors were closed and I was trapped inside. Before you launch a rocket, you need to plan the order of your staging events. Nobody wants to start out their flight by popping their parachute, right? Most parts that can be staged are automatically assigned to stages. Their activation order can be seen in the staging stack. You can change when staging events occur by moving them between stages. You can also add, remove, and reorder stages. Best of all, you can do this in both the VAB and in flight. Yeah, it was fun. The other catastrophic explosion occurred uh, towards the end of stream. I took off from my home planet, which is a gas giant, so it takes a long time to get out of orbit, and I went to try and do another investigation mission, and I got there, and I don't quite have the hang of controlling the ship's speed just yet. Let's just say I got to the station a little too quickly. The staging order begins at the bottom of the staging stack. You want your boosters and main engine to fire together for maximum thrust. The solid fuel boosters are currently in the second stage. If we don't change anything, the boosters will ignite late and detach themselves at the same time. This would be embarrassing for everybody, so let's move the boosters down to stage one. Okay. Your solid fuel boosters burn very hard and very fast, so they will run out of fuel first. Even though your main engine and boosters will activate at the same time, you want to drop the empty boosters before you drop your main engine. You'll add a new stage above stage one to do one thing. Activate the radial decouplers to jettison your spent boosters. Okay. Now move all four radial decouplers from stage four to your new stage two. All done. Your remaining stages are set up so that Stage 4 will activate your orbital stage's engine. Stage 5 will detach the orbital stage's fuel tank when it's empty. And Stage 6 will deploy your landing parachute. Thanks to you, this rocket is ready to fly. Ready's a strong word. Gotta love firing the boosters, then immediately dropping them while they're going. I certainly don't know anything about how that might play out. of launching, executing a gravity turn to get moving sideways, coasting to orbital altitude, and doing a final burn at the top of your arc to establish a stable orbit. Before we begin, let's talk about the nav ball. The nav ball shows your vehicle's orientation relative to the horizon. The blue half of the ball represents the sky, and the brown half represents the ground. The level indicator at the center shows your vehicle's orientation. When you turn, the ball turns. When you roll, the ball rolls. Assuming you want your rocket pointed at the sky, you'll want to see lots of blue on the nav ball. If you get confused, remember this rhyme. If the nav ball's brown, you're going down. That's a big assumption. What if we want the rocket to go down? At 
launch, you want all your engines at maximum thrust, which means you need to set your throttle at 100%. Your solid fuel boosters are way ahead of you on this. They have no setting other than full throttle, and they can't be shut off once they're lit. Once you hit the go button, they'll go full tilt until they run out of fuel. Still, your main engine's throttle is in your control. You can see your main throttle here. Left shift gradually increases your throttle. Left control gradually decreases your throttle. Z and X instantly set your throttle to 100 or 0% respectively. Left click on the throttle will set its level where you clicked. Okay. Your fuel levels are visible within the staging stack. Right now, you can see that your main engine and four boosters are all topped off and ready to rumble. It's time to go. At the start, all you need to do is fly straight up. I'll check back in with you once those boosters are empty. Good luck! Okay, let's go. Yeah, that's probably a good idea, Watai. uses the pull of the planet's gravity to help bend your vertical ascent into a horizontal arc. It's the first step to entering orbit. For our first flight to orbit, we're going to start our gravity turn up to where the air is thin, at an altitude of around 10,000 meters. To show you where to aim your rocket, I've placed a target marker on your nav ball. Okay. First, we need to get to 10,000 meters. going to yaw towards the east so that the target marker is in the center of the nav ball. Your vessel and nav ball should look like this example video if you're performing the gravity turn correctly. All right. Nope, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. It doesn't want to turn. <laughs> Okay, we're going. Well, it shouldn't matter now. When your current stage's fuel is empty. Let's drop it and activate your deep space engine. Great job! Your rocket is on its way to orbit. As you gain experience, you can make your gravity turns more efficient by starting to tilt your rocket soon after liftoff. Adjusting course with a series of small corrections instead of one big one will leave you with a lot more fuel when you get to orbit. Turning immediately after launch requires a very stable rocket. So if you ever have trouble keeping the pointy end up, you can try the simplified wait and turn method we use today. Strongest shaped rocket? I didn't design it, Mr. Sagirama. That's the tutorial rocket. Okay, next step. Yeah, I, I, I would be driven crazy by that, Watai. I think uh, it definitely sounds like a new keyboard is in the cards. Right now, we're on a ballistic trajectory. If no further adjustments are made, your rocket will eventually fall back down to the ground. Our objective is to turn this arc into an orbit. The process of turning your trajectory into a circular orbit is called circularization. Partial credit to the rocket people on that one. It does have the word circle in it, but it's really hard to say. It's not that hard. When planning and executing orbital maneuvers, you'll want to switch to map view, where you can see every part of your current trajectory. The blue arc passing through your vehicle is its current trajectory. The path your rocket will follow if you don't touch the controls anymore. Our goal is to make that arc into a circular orbit. After you've coasted nearly to the top of this arc, 
you're going to point forward, and then you're going to ignite your engine. If you time this burn right, you'll never quite get to the top of the arc, as it'll keep widening in front of you until it wraps all the way around the planet. Circularization. See? Easy. Let's break that down a little more. The top of your arc has a helpful tag in map view. It's called the apoapsis, abbreviated as AP. You're going to max out your throttle before you pass this point. We're paused at just before the apoapsis. We want to go faster in the direction we're already moving, so we need to make sure our rocket is pointed forward. There's a handy marker on your navball called the prograde marker. That represents your forward direction. Use the Stability Assist System, or SAS, to point your vessel at that marker. You're all lined up and ready to go. The next step is to go max throttle. It can take time for your arc to fully expand into an orbit. If you look closely at where your trajectory meets the ground, you'll see it moving toward the horizon. Let's zoom out a little bit so we see this better. I'm surprised how big this behemoth of a console is. Yeah, it is pretty sizable, but it's really fun. Once your trajectory reaches all the way around the planet, you'll see another marker on your orbit. This is the periapsis, or PE, the lowest point in your orbit. It'll always live on the opposite side of your orbit from the apoapsis, or highest point. By burning prograde near your apoapsis, you increase the altitude of your periapsis, the lowest point on your orbit. Redaction time. It's pretty good to see you. How are you doing? What's going on? It's been a bit. Here's the most important thing to remember about setting up an orbit above an atmosphere. Your periapsis must be higher than the atmosphere, or your rocket will start to slow down every time it dips into the up. Okay, your orbit is fully out of the atmosphere. Cut the throttle. You did it! You're in orbit! This is when I'd usually tell you to look under your seat in the simulator, or you'd find a delicious celebratory treat. Sadly, since the vending machine in the astrodynamics lab broke down, it has gotten very difficult to hide snacks anywhere at KSC. Feel free to take a moment to admire your first orbit. In a way, you've given yourself a mind snack, which is way better than the edible kind anyway. Right? Right? <laughs> Doing great, been doing more and more models. Oh, what kind of redaction time? Well, come on in, Echo. Okay, so that's tutorial two done. Oh, Warhammer 40k models, that's awesome. I keep thinking one of these days I would love to build uh, the Enterprise D as a model kit. Your mom's in... Wow, Aaron Lar. Those are some strong words. Orbits are weird. So you're in orbit. Now what? Now there are many things to do in orbit. Perform experiments for science, travel to other planets or moons, and when you're ready, return home. They're very optimistic. You have 90 guardsmen that aren't going to paint themselves. They're not very disciplined, then. You should train them to do that. Orbits are weird. Remember your orbiting baseball? What if you wanted to make its orbit higher? Well, it's a baseball, so grab your bat and try to hit the ball to a higher orbit. Your first thought might be to try to deflect the ball upwards. Unfortunately, hitting the ball upward bends its orbit so that it hits the ground before it can return to you. What you need to do is hit the ball in the direction it's already moving, adding to its already high velocity. Now that you've sped the ball up, why isn't it flying any higher? It just keeps whizzing by at the same height it always did. After all, I said that making it go faster would make it go higher. What gives? The ball is actually going higher but it's going higher on the opposite side of the planet from where you're standing. You've raised its orbit, and you've learned the first lesson of orbital maneuvering. Your actions affect the opposite side of your orbit. Weird, huh? 
So your ball is moving faster, but it's still passing you at the same height. How do you get its orbit higher on this side of the planet? Now that you know how changes in velocity affect the other side of your orbit, you've got all you need. By adding velocity to the ball at the highest point in its orbit, you raise the lowest point in its orbit and make it circular again. Doing good, Echo. Just kind of getting started. I've gone through the tutorials for this game once before last night. I'm just doing it again to kind of reinforce it and so that people in chat have a chance to see it because it's really funny and informative. And then we're going to be trying probably weird stuff in the actual game itself. Sounds like effort. That's true redaction time. But painting sounds like effort too. But you can get your playing cards to paint your roses red. That's true. I, I've seen that done. That's a thing you can do. Uh, yeah, actually, KSP had a tutorial, but it was nothing like this one, and I believe it was added much, much later. For most of its life cycle, it did not have tutorials. How's it going, TNR? The equatorial orbit is good, but if you want to travel beyond Kerbin, you'll need to manipulate your orbit. Let's start with something simple, expanding an orbit. We do that by increasing the value of our apoapsis. Let's get a good view. Okay. Remember how you circularized your orbit by increasing your forward velocity? To raise your orbit, you'll just do more of the same. It's time to burn prograde. I don't know if you can actually rename the Kerbals in this one, Redaction Time. I know you could in the first game. I'm not certain that it's possible in this one. That may be a thing that they do later. It probably wasn't the first thing on their must, you know, must do list for launch. Uh, but uh, maybe eventually. Unless you guys happen to know of a way to do it in Kerbal Space Program 2, in which case, yes. But uh, as far as I know, that's not a thing we can do yet. Now that we're pointed the right way, we can increase the throttle and watch our orbit expand. Okay. Cut the throttle. If you over... Nice. That maneuver raised our orbit on the other side of Kerbin, so we will enter high orbit there. Waiting to reach a specific point can be as eventful as watching the neon stripes on your rover dry. The paint job will be worth it, but isn't it better to rush to the end? Skip ahead to the good stuff using a time warp. Like I said earlier, the highest point of our orbit is called the apoapsis. The lowest point of our orbit is known as the periapsis. By default, your camera is focused on your vessel. So if you can't see either of these points, adjust your camera. Okay, we can see both. Oh, shoot. Ads in progress, guys. I'll be right back. That was... I like that. <laughs> oh, she's not dead. Interesting. Pardon me. This program is too stupid to glean your desire from such a wonderfully crafted sentence. Please try something else. Oh. Shh. What the hell, game? Sorry about that, folks. We are back. Okay. Uh, yeah, they... they... They're doing an insane amount for this game. The next thing they're going to add to early access is, I believe they're doing science and the, uh, you know, the tech tree progression mode, which right now there is no such concept. You just have access to everything right off, right off the bat. So we have all the toys to play with. I'm looking forward to that, though. I really enjoy working for the science and building your way up. Scroll the middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Double-click an object to center your camera on it. Click the middle mouse. Excellent! 
You can time warp to any position on your trajectory by selecting a point on your vehicle's current path, and then selecting time warp to point. Thank you, Aranar. Now you're way up in the sky, so high that if you circularize your orbit now, you'll be in high orbit. Wow, the black starry void looks so small from here. Wouldn't it look big from here? I'm really looking forward to when they add all the stuff like From colonies and stuff like that. These probe cores, a lot of critical rocket parts use electric charge. You'll want to design your rocket so it can generate and store EC. Cockpit, well, that's true. That's true reduction time. Most rocket engines generate electric charge while active, but we'll still need a way to keep our batteries full while coasting between maneuvers. Solar panels convert Kerbal's light into EC for our rockets. Small solar panels can just be placed, but large solar panels are delicate and must only be deployed once we're out of the atmosphere. I've equipped this rocket with two deployable solar panels. Here's a hand crank. Get to work. What? <laughs> just kidding. There's a handy button that opens all of them with a single click. Give it a try. That's better. Great. The solar panels are now extended. Light tracking solar panels only rotate on one axis, so we may need to reorient our ship to point them fully at the sun. Hey, we'll Ultra, how's it going? Getting direct sunlight by rolling our ship a little bit. Excellent. The solar panels are soaking up all of those sweet photons and giving our rockets some much needed EC. You can see the status of any solar panel within the part manager in the electrical parts menu. You can either access the app directly by clicking the app button, or you can right click a part to directly access it in the part manager. I'm doing pretty good, Ultra. It's good to see you. Can we get shout outs for Ultra? She's a fantastic streamer who played Kerbal Space Program for the very first time last night. And by Kerbal Space Program, I mean KSB2, this game. Uh, she had never played the first one before, and I've been going through her VOD, and it's actually really, really fun watching her experience it for the very first time ever, without doing the tutorials. Oh, thank you very much, Erinor. I appreciate that. Okay, let's see. Um... Getting EC is one thing, and storing it is another. Most command pods have a small battery. But Not yet, Ultra. I'm getting to that one. EC storage. When we're traveling far from the sun or going to the dark side of a planet, more batteries means more peace of mind. I'm only a, like maybe two hours in at this point, so I've still got quite a bit of the stream left to go. I just got a little bit past where I had popped in during one of my breaks to say hi. So you never got to see any of this stuff. We're actually doing the orbit tutorials right now. A lot of the, it's surprising actually, a lot of the tutorial is devoted to orbital mechanics. At some point, the crew will run out of snacks. Did you know a Kerbal is 99.9% .9 more likely to crash when hungry? That's when it's time to head back down to Kerbin, a planet known for its plentiful snack options. First, let's get a better view for this operation. Okay. Remember how we burned prograde to raise our orbit? To lower our orbit, we burn in the opposite direction, retrograde. SAS can really help us out here, so let's turn that on. It's probably good that you're doing the tutorial. I don't know what button it is, but it just deletes your craft and doesn't even give you a confirmation button? Oh, God. That's probably feedback they would like to know about. <laughs> Okay, let's turn SAS on. Now flip retrograde, the opposite direction to our rocket's movement. When we get into position to fire our engine backwards, we'll slow down. All right, the rocket is aligned to retrograde. Increase the throttle and burn until our trajectory is just past the atmosphere. Can you not undo that once you've done it? As we decelerate, 
Watch what's happening to our periapsis. Once it enters the atmosphere, this rocket is on a path back to the ground. Don't ease off the throttle yet, though. We're gonna keep burning until our trajectory intercepts the ground. This should give us a good idea. That's it. Let's stop our burn. Now that we're on a collision course with Kerbin, we need to turn that collision into something more survivable. What? This process of crashing without dying is called landing. <laughs> our upcoming stage will activate a decoupler, dropping the engine and exposing a very important heat shield. Why don't you do that now? You had already launched? I mean, if that were just in the, uh, the, the VAB, that would make sense. How can you just delete your ship? when it's actually on an active mission that that they definitely need to hear about that <laughs> oh my god okay stage the rocket let's get out of map view for this great we're on our way down and our heat shield is exposed have you ever wondered what a marshmallow feels like when it catches on fire you're about to find out Chat said you couldn't get it back. Oh, man. I'm so sorry. That had to have been heartbreaking. And probably pretty traumatizing for whichever Kerbal you happen to have in there. Okay, I think this might be the very last tutorial now. Orbital transfers. You've mastered orbits around Kerbin, and now the universe beckons. It is so aliens don't get their hands on your superior technology. Just delete everything. Well, I guess that makes sense. It was equal parts heartbreaking and hilarious. I can see that. Orbital transfers. Learn what is involved in traveling to another celestial body. No problem, Ultra. transfers as you know the faster you go the higher your orbit gets if you get moving fast enough your orbit may cross the orbit of some other object like a moon or a planet the closest celestial body to Kerbin is the Mun if you're looking for somewhere else to fly a rocket the Mun is a good choice the real trick to getting there is timing your departure so that the Mun captures your vehicle at its highest point if you miss time your departure, you may miss the MUN entirely, which creates a lot of paperwork. Let's assume you've left at the right time and the MUN is there to meet you. As your vessel approaches the MUN, it enters a zone in which the MUN's gravitational influence on your orbit is stronger than Kerbin's. This zone is called the MUN's sphere of influence. You've had to go very quickly to escape Kerbin's gravity, much too fast for the MUN's low gravity to capture you. If you don't slow down, your vehicle will speed past the mud and be flung farther into space. Remember what I said about paperwork? <laughs> Once you're in the mud's gravity well, the best way to slow down is to fire your engines backwards until your trajectory becomes a nice, stable orbit. Now you're a moon of the mud. <laughs> what does it mean for your horoscope when Kerbals are in retrograde? Oh, man. That depends a great deal on whether they've been um, whether they've been drinking any Gatorade. You, how else would you pronounce Mun? Obviously, it's Mun. That poor, poor Kerbal. It was pixelated on crash. That's true. It was pretty messy. I guess I always just pronounced it Moon. Our rocket is in orbit over Kerbin and ready to fly. The mission today is to, drumroll please, intercept and orbit the Mun. To be captured by the Mun's gravity, our vessel must cross into the Mun's sphere of influence, or SOI, the zone in which its gravity is stronger than any other celestial body around it. Okay. We're going to create a maneuver plan to figure out when and how long we need to fire our engines to intercept the mud. Enter map view. All right. 
Great! Now here's a new trick. We can select any object as a target in map view. Targeting gives us useful information and enables new tools. Once we've targeted a celestial body or other object in space, our maneuver will provide closest pass and plane angle information. This can be very helpful for meeting up with someone or something in space. Right now, our camera is following our vessel as it orbits Kerbin. Let's adjust our camera until we can see the mud. Then, right-click to target it. Okay, there's Mun. We want to place this maneuver plan with two things in mind. First, the Mun is in motion. We can't aim our spacecraft where the Mun is right now. Instead, we have to aim where the Mun will be after our vehicle has coasted all the way from Kerbin. Second, remember how increasing velocity raises the opposite side of our orbit? Since we're placing this maneuver plan where we intend to start our burn, we should place it on the opposite side of Kerbin from where we intend to intercept the MUN. It was a different symbol, but you got there, yes. I made the actual assumption it was meant to be, and they just didn't include the umlaut for whatever reason. Placing a maneuver plan usually involves making a best guess, and then fiddling with the maneuver until you get an intercept. Fortunately, you've got a crack navigator with you today. By my calculations, we'll want to put our maneuver here. Okay. Left clicking the point near the periapsis. Excellent. We've just created a maneuver plan. While we could find out if our departure timing is correct by just picking a direction and maxing the throttle, a maneuver plan tells us in advance how much delta V we'll need, how long we'll need to burn, and in what direction our vessel will need to point during the maneuver. Grab and pull the arrows to plan a burn along that direction. This maneuver is pretty simple. We want to burn prograde and expand our orbit. All right, so... Here. Nice! That maneuver event towards the end of your trajectory is exactly what we're looking for. It tells that if we execute this plan, we'll intercept the MUN. That looks weird to me, but okay. I'm not sure I understand the line language they're using, but I'm going to take its word for it. If a maneuver looks right, but we're not getting the intercept we expect, we can change the starting position of the maneuver by grabbing and dragging the middle of the maneuver plan along our orbit. It's very common to refine a maneuver plan by adjusting both the position of the maneuver and the direction of the planned burn. See, mine doesn't look anything like this. Mine kind of looks like we're burning all the way around here. <laughs> we're orbiting the sun. Hey, CD, how's it going? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? It's good to see you. Could we get a shout out for uh, Crystal Dragon as well? I'm not sure I did that right. Let's see if I can adjust this a little bit. Oh, okay. I think that makes it make a little bit more sense. Yeah, we're just kind of going over that way. Thank you, Aranor. I appreciate that. How's... Oh, how... That's right. You're playing Celesta. How is Celesta treating you? I love that game. I really... I need to get the DLC for that one and get back into that at some point. But that's going to be tricky because... 2023 is such a crowded year for big releases. No problem, CD. No problem at all. I hope everyone's having a good weekend, by the way. Anybody have anything awesome going on? If we don't want to maneuver at all, we can delete the plan, either by right-clicking the gizmo and selecting delete, or through the burn timer. Maneuvers are invaluable when leaving Kerbin. Feel free to come back and practice anytime. I'm probably going to have to do that. We 
We've got a maneuver plan that intercepts the mine. Now we just need to execute that maneuver and fly to the moon ourselves. Enter map view. Okay. Whenever we have a maneuver plan, a burn timer will appear. The timer shows you how much time is left until we need to execute the maneuver. I've paused the simulation for a moment, so this number won't count down quite yet. The timer also tells us how long we'll need to burn our engines at 100% throttle in order to complete the maneuver. Now let's take a look at the nav ball. A new marker has joined our old prograde and retrograde markers. This is called a maneuver marker, and it shows us the orientation of our planned maneuver. We'll want to make sure that this marker is in the center of our nav ball during our maneuver burn. Luckily, we can aim at this maneuver marker by selecting the maneuver button on your SAS controls. Orient your vessel to maneuver using SAS. Okay. Now your vehicle is properly oriented. And through the magic of SAS and more math than I'd like to admit, our vessel is properly oriented. We're still far from our planned burn, so let's speed things up. Been playing it a ton, absolutely loving it, loving the co-op campaign I'm in with my friend. Don't know for sure because it's my first time through the campaign, but I think we're nearing its end. That's really cool. I've never actually finished the single player story in that, which is another reason I need to get into it. While we could rely on our reflexes to time warp at the perfect moment, a less stressful alternative is warping to a specific point in our orbit. See this button? Select it to warp automatically to the moment before our maneuver begins. Departure burn, here we come. Okay. Great! We've exited just before our maneuver burn, and I've paused the simulation once more. After we select continue, remember to wait until the countdown reaches zero. Then we'll go full throttle until our burn timer reaches zero. Then cut the throttle quickly to avoid overshooting our target. We're probably going to have a while to wait on that later. I don't think multiplayer is coming anytime soon, although it is still planned for early access as far as I understand it. It's just a later stage of early access. Uh, okay, let's see. Remember to wait till the countdown reaches zero. Get full throttle till our burn timer reaches zero. Then cut the throttle quickly. Okay. Okay, get ready to hit the throttle. Ready. So we've got 30 seconds. 20. 15. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Watch the burn timer. We want to stop our burn once it reaches zero. And then we've got 40 some odd seconds for that one. Thirty. <laughs> no, I never thought of that, Ultra. Twenty. Fifteen. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Everything's looking great work. You've successfully executed a maneuver, and now we're on our way to the mud. Yep, that's where we're going. We have to leave the planet behind. That's an intercept path to get captured by the moon's gravity. Or sorry, the moon's gravity. a while to reach the month, but don't let the weight fool you. We're now moving faster than any Kerbal has ever flown before. When we enter the month's sphere of influence, we'll be going way too fast for the month's gravity to capture our vehicle. It gets really annoying when she starts counting down the individual seconds. To orbit the month, we'll need to burn retrograde once we're inside its SOI. 
or sphere of influence. This will slow us down enough to keep us from being whipped into interplanetary space. Let's start by time warping until we're within the Mun's sphere of influence. That's the sphere within which the Mun is the primary gravitational influence on your vehicle. Let's get a little bolder with our time warp this time. Select 1,000 times time warp. Farewell, Kerbin. We'll miss you. Welcome to the Mun's Sphere of Influence. Let's slow down to normal time so we can create our capture maneuver. Okay. Did you notice that we've got a periapsis above the Mun, but no apoapsis? That's because we're going too fast to complete an orbit before sailing past the Mun. Don't worry, we have time to adjust. Our objective is to slow down enough so that both apoapsis and periapsis are within the Mun's Sphere of Influence. Alrighty. Remember the rule of orbital opposites. Because we want to lower your apoapsis, we'll need to place our maneuver plan at the periapsis. Let's get started. Open the context menu by left clicking the orbit near the periapsis icon. So, right here. Create a maneuver plan. In order to reduce our apoapsis, we need to slow down by burning backwards or retrograde. This is a little like deorbiting over Kerbin, but we're going to stop burning before our trajectory meets Mun dust. Okay, create a maneuver that will orbit the moon by or the Mun by pulling on the retrograde arrow. Okay, so let's move this over here. Okay. Maneuver plan set. Next up, let's make sure we're pointed where we need to be. Okay. If the maneuver is right and we're pointed in the right direction, now we need to time warp to the right position. Warp to our maneuver by selecting maneuver warp. Now I want to see a team's Stream a Kerbin to Mun flight in real time. Oh, God. Oh, you're right. We've lost our stream elements name again. That's weird. I'll have to fix that at some point. And we're on our way. Almost there. When the countdown reaches zero, throttle up to start your capture burn. Okay, hang on. Uh, where are we? Oh, okay, 30. Twenty. I won't count down from ten this time. Ten. Five. Okay, there we go. Rock keep burning until the burn timer reaches zero. Shut the engines now. Fantastic. That was some fancy flying. Looks to me like you're about ready to try this for real. Uh, I don't know about that. We'll see. Tutorial complete. That you need to slow down in order to be captured by another celestial body. Where to create a maneuver to be captured. I'm still a little fuzzy on the whole orbital maneuver thing. Even having done it twice now in the tutorial. But I guess we'll see how it goes. Yeah, updates. You'll be able to play in a couple of hours. <laughs> Alright, guys. So that's training. Let's go to the VAB. Two minutes. Two minute warning. Thank you, Aaronlar. So we're going to try creating a... 
actually let's let's we'll we'll keep it simple ish we're gonna start with that no no stop that Go away. There we are. Thank you. Oh, that's the colors that I chose. They actually paint the rocket. Or the other vehicle. Now, the time thing is not, uh, you know, always accurate, but hopefully that's about right. Okay, so we've got our control module. We're going to... Oh, actually, let me take another quick look at that. How... Si how what size is that? That's small? Alright. So we're going to clearly need some adapters. Where's adapter? Um, small to large. Large to extra large. If it doesn't update multiple times in a row. True. Okay, so now we need an extra large methalox fuel tank. Is it at methalox we want? Or let's go solid fuel. What is methalox? We're going to try it. We'll see if it works. That doesn't quite fit. Oh, and I guess we're probably going to want decouplers, too. That would probably help. Small decoupler. Where's large to extra large on the adapters? Oh, ads in progress. Be right back. I don't think I've ever had this happen before. Don't hunt loke. Oh my god, gee. She hunted Locust and killed her. Portal on your mark. detention center somewhere in the borough. According to oh. what I could pass, it was used to interrogate high-value local insurgents. This is one less weapon in their arsenal. I can't believe this was actually useful for something. Okay, we're back. Okay, so we need fuel tanks. We're gonna go methalox, I think. Gotta watch that, actually. I'm second guessing my choice of agency colors. But we'll go with it for now. 
Okay, let's see. Uh, orbital Methalox engine. Oh, that's where the solid fuel boosters are. Do they not have any extra large? Hey, Vikings. Thank you, Aaron Lord. Thank you, uh, Mr. Soggy Roman. No worries. No worries, space. KSP2, we just did a whole bunch of the tutorials. And we're now starting to look at making a ridiculous rocket just to get things rolling. Because you have to go ridiculous in this. Okay, we're just going to do that. And we're going to need some stability. with some symmetry, I think. That looks too big. Let's go with this one instead. Okay. Now, we probably want to consider the possibility of bringing our astronauts back alive. So I guess we ought to think about maybe giving a parachute or something. We can't really use this one. So we'll go with this one. This is a familiar one. I think we've used this before. So we'll put that right there. I always forget that our microwave interferes with the Wi-Fi. Oof. I am sorry. Okay. This is entirely reasonable and in no way a ridiculous attempt. Uh, that doesn't look like the launch pad. It put me on the runway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, you know what? I probably need an extra stage here. Let's go there. So stage one, stage two, and then parachute. This is going to go great. Uh, are we... Okay, I, I think we have a problem here. I don't think that worked quite the way we wanted. No, that should be work. That should be doable later. In fact, they used this specific cockpit in one of the tutorial missions on an actual rocket. Uh, all right. Let's revert to VAB. We might need to look at the engineer's report. No, I'm sure it put us on the runway because I used a space plane cockpit, but I don't think that's why the ship is not actually functioning. Not a clue, Mr. Soggy Ramen. That's the kind of question that a competent engineer would ask. We do not ask these questions. All right. Thrust to weight ratio is less than one. Vessel will not leave the launch pad. All right, so we might be a little bit too ridiculous. Clearly, we need to drop some unnecessary weight. Uh, 
Uh, oh, that's a very good question, Glader. What problem? Our ship is perfect. It will work flawlessly. It's an elegant thing of grace and beauty. Okay, so where are we launching to? Where did, oh, runway one. Oh, that's so cool. I didn't realize they had all kinds of different launch pads. Two different one, a boat launch, what? <laughs> wow. They've changed more than I expected they would. We're gonna go to launch pad one. Oh, it was just trussing to keep everything looking nicer. But we don't need it to look nice, we just need it to go. Uh, okay, I think we still need that. There we go. Well, it looks more impressive when it's on the proper launch pad. <laughs> That's actually a ridiculous amount of fuel. <laughs> Oh, like I said, Ultra, that's the type of question that competent engineers would ask. We do not ask those questions here. <laughs> okay. <sighs> not trying to be the classic sports car, just the junker that reliably gets you to work. Reliably is asking a lot, CD. Okay, so maybe there might be one or two small issues with that particular design. Okay. We're going to keep the cockpit and we're going to keep the parachute. We'll try being slightly more reasonable with our choice of rockets, though. Um, we'll go medium. Let's do small to medium conversion. Where are... There we go. Small to medium. That's tiny to small. We want... That's... No. What the heck? Why does it skip small to large? That can't be right. That's got to be mislabeled. Okay, so we're going to do that. Now, we can't use these because those are Methalox engines. We need... Wait, what? Oh, no, but hang on. The JFT-10,000 is the largest methane fuel tank commercially available anywhere. If you want to build an aircraft that can circumnavigate the globe... Ah, okay. So that's a plane engine. 
So this is perfect because it's silly to use a plane engine to power a rocket, so we're gonna give it a try. So we need to use a jet engine. <laughs> and they don't attach the way I'm hoping they will. So that's, oh, good. Oh, actually, you know, that might explain why I had trouble finding the right adapter. Let's get rid of that adapter, and we're going to go with one of these. Nope, not those. JX4 Whiplash. I was trying to show Faith that you would indeed succeed. I appreciate it, CD. You like the nubbin? My four years of failing to get a BS physics degree can't prevent Gord from ignoring all of my advice and YOLOing it anyway. That is correct, Mr. Soggy Raman. Oh, um... Just occurs to me... Having a fuel tank is still a good idea. You can only push silliness so far. Um. <laughs> this is going to be great. Doesn't look quite right. Okay. We don't remember things, Mr. Soggy Ramen. We just go for it. Oh, uh. We probably don't want all that extra staging, though. We want all these firing at the same time. Is it just me, or is failing sometimes a lot more in entertaining than actually succeeding? I like learning the hard way. It demonstrates exactly why the idea won't work. Okay, maybe we'll skip the uh, plane parts, or at least the plane engines. We, were, we won't go with the methane. So we'll get rid of those. But now we know what methane is for, so that's a plus. We're gonna skip all of this stuff and go... What? Oh my god, that's loud. Jarug, 44 freaking months. That's amazing. How are you doing? It's good new, to new see you. morning, fellas. <laughs> it could. It could. <laughs> How are you doing, Jarug? It's good to see you. Um, right, okay. Let's do... 
one of these. Hey, Anstara, no, I certainly did not. How were you doing? Okay, and... Uh, these are the intakes, so you can pull in air. Which we don't need. Oh, Jarek, okay. Well, I won't speak for Jarek then. First, oh, we could use stabilizers instead of actual wings. That's a thing we could consider. Okay. Oh, the text-to-speech. You'll have to take that up with Morgan. Now, how's our staging? We don't want empty stages. We want that to go. Then we want that to go. Then we want that to go. I don't know why we're starting on stage four, but there we are. This game is very entertaining, Anstara. We have so far failed to get off the launch pad twice. Sounds like a plan. The thrust to weight ratio of solid fuel rockets are really high. See, this is a learning opportunity, Mr. Soggy Roman. You have to try all these things to see why it doesn't work. Or why it does work, since this actually seems to be going fairly well. I will say I like that we're not getting all of the horrible instability that we got in Kerbal Space Program 1. I will also say though, I miss the science. I'm really looking forward to the matting the science. I guess we are thoroughly in space now. Okay. And that's it. Now we're gonna coast forever. Let's see how that looks. Oh my god. Um. Uh, um. <laughs> we might have used too large a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, 
Your vehicle is out of fuel. You can no longer change its course, and you are so not wrong. I'm sure we'll make it back to the planet eventually. See, it's catching up with us, right? There's no way we'll miss it again. It's only been a year. <laughs> Oh, we might actually get to... Oh, my God. Are we going to... No. No, okay. Moho's going too fast. Oh, we're crossing inside of... What's this planet? We crossed inside Gilly's orbit. It might take a few years, but we will get back to Kerbin. And he's not seeming to suffer any ill effects. I guess he's got lots of snacks with him. Oh, we're catching back up. We will get there. Come on. You can do it. It's only a planet. You can move faster. One of these days. I think right now it's basically a race to see which planet we intercept first. Oh, we. Wow, that was very close, actually. <laughs> Oh, there's no playing. We only had the one rocket. We burned that up. Now there's no control. Oh, 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 oh my god. That was, we approached so freaking close to that one. Oh, look at that. Wow. Oh, 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 oh. Hang on. Okay. I think we might have to revert this, but that was amazing. We achieved solar orbit. Okay, let's see. Pun or dad joke. The other day, I was asking a friend of mine if they knew about the project scientists were trying to do growing herbs in space after the first one failed. Pretty sure they called it Herbal Space Program 2. Wow. <laughs> wow, delicious. Okay. Okay. Terrible pun or dad joke. What do you get when you divide the circumference of a jack-o'-lantern by its diameter? Pumpkin pie. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, Ultra. That was better than usual. 
then I feel like I have failed and I should do another one to make sure that it's properly bad. One and a half minute warning, by the way, folks. Okay, so we might have used maybe too much solid fuel. And it might not be the worst idea in the world to have some sort of backup engine so that we can maneuver once we get out there. Much better than the... Actually, I like the joke you came up with for all that I give you crap about it. It was fun. Um, let's see. A little more seriously. We want... We probably do want Methalox. No, that's too big. And we'll do a small Methalox engine. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. You know what? Let's do two of those. And we're going to do symmetry here. We'll put two of those on there. And then what we're going to do is... Where's coupling? We're going to do... Oh. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break and then we'll come back and finish this build after the ads are done. I don't think I've ever had this happen before. Distance in calculating whether the mass effect is a phenomenon that occurs only in our universe or in all possible universes. It may be that our laws of physics only occur in a finite area, a bubble, if you will, in an ocean of other possibilities. I am speculating whether, if you went far enough out or created enough energy, you could reach a place where one plus one equals three. Everything would change. All energy, all matter, all the underlying mass of the universe would be unrecognizable to us. Why? What were you thinking? I'll get back to you. Back. That ant go. I like that their eyes start glowing red as soon as you go hostile on them. help as much as I was hoping it Okay, we're back. What ad was that, Pilatius? Thank you. Okay, so we've got our connectors. We're probably going to want a couple of smaller solid fuel boosters to get out into space mini boosters like we'll just do these Thank you. 
Uh, now add about drinking chocolate milk. It's one of the drinks you drink frequently. Okay, fair. Thank you, Kellen Ray. How's it going, Kellen Ray? The wife got her approval for permanent residence the other day, and not one word of a lie, three hours later, got an ad for new residence. Oh, no. I wish I could say that was more surprising. Okay, we'll go with that. That looks fully reasonable, doesn't it? We're gonna find out. Okay, so we've got solid engines, both of them. That's the first stage. Second stage, blast that away. Th uh, but at the same time, that... Actually, you know what? I think it's okay to have those as separate stages. Uh, fourth stage... Yeah, that's reasonable. Fourth stage, except we want a fifth one. So we want that there. Okay. Still suffering under the crushing weight of this darn flu, giving it one more day, and if I'm still experiencing tongue swelling? Ooh, man, Callan Ray, that's not fun. I hope it goes away on its own, or at the very least, I hope they're able to help you with it if you have to go in. You got very targeted ads back when you were on Facebook and in an EVE online group. That doesn't shock me. Okay, let's see about this one. Are so good. We're maybe running through fuel a little bit faster than I might have hoped. What on earth is that? Oh, okay. We're in space, and I haven't even started the other stage yet. Okay, this is the part I don't remember. If you're curious about... Oh, nope. I didn't mean that. If you're curious about... I always want to hit spacebar to... Um, oh, no. Oh, crap. Damn. <laughs> Oops. Okay, never mind. We're not doing any more maneuvering. Oh, and I just hit spacebar again. I don't think it registered, so... Uh, yeah, we just ejected our maneuvering rocket, so now we're just gonna go until we crash back on the planet. I want to pause by hitting the space bar. 
And that's screwing me up more with this one than it was with the original Kerbal Space Program. Is there a way to... Yeah, there probably is, but I don't know if I want to mess with it too much. Let's speed things up a little bit. Or a lot. We got pretty out there, though. We made it pretty well into space proper. Oh, and look at that. We're coming right back down on the Kerbal Space Center, too. That's impressive stuff. Oh, it... I, oh, jeez. I did release the parachute. Hopefully it doesn't actually tear off. It really does, Kragen. It looks gorgeous. It's amazing. And I love the layout of the KSP this time around. And I like that they've apparently added boats, which I was not aware of previously. They've even got a little dock over here. Okay, Parachute, you can deploy any time here. Any time. It is going to fully open, right? At some point, that would be good. Don't want to spoil too much before you get it? No worries. Have a great time with it. The ground is getting kind of close. Ah, there we go. Okay. We should be safe. might be able to roll all the way home from here. Gonna call it a night head to hoof equipment all over the office. Oh, we're on the wrong slope of the hill. Okay. On your weekend off. Ooh, that sucks, Vikings. Drop a lurk. Have a good rest of stream and a good night. Thank you so much, Vikings. I appreciate that you dropped in. When you've successfully landed or splashed down, you can recover your vessel here. When you recover your vehicle, your vehicle will be recycled and your crew return to KSC for their next mission. Now, I need to figure out how we actually select the crew member. Oh, I love that you can see them inside the vehicles, too. That's one of the things I like about this uh, plane cockpit, is that it gives a really good view of the pilot. But it feels weird using Bill instead of good old Jeb. It doesn't feel like Kerbal Space Program unless we're putting Jeb in mortal jeopardy. Okay, so we don't need to revert this one. This was just flat out successful unless you take into account that we kind of wanted um, that we kind of wanted to do a little maneuvering fly safe one. Oh, I should probably also name stuff you can find any track item here Selecting an object will show the information panel. This would give you detailed information. Really handy for planning missions to new celestial bodies. You can perform actions on your vessels here, too. This is a place to be if you want to change what vessel you're actively flying. Okay. We want to recover. 
Bravo. Okay, mission time, 13 minutes, 15 seconds. Highest altitude, 75,000 meters. Highest speed over land, 20 meters per second. Highest speed overall, 874 meters per second. Ground distance covered, 3 meters. Total distance traveled, 60 kilometers. Highest G-forces experienced, 222.6 Gs. Mortal Jeopardy. How's it going, Baconstein? Oh, boy. Okay. All right. That was awesome. Let's go back to the VAB. Uh, oh, wait. No, I don't want to revert. Don't revert. How, uh, oh, because revert to VAB. We don't want to revert. Let's go to the VAB without reverting. Okay, that was actually a really cool vehicle, and I just realized that we just recycled it, and now I don't have it anymore. Oh well, it was not difficult to put together. Uh, that means we need to make a Mark II. Unless maybe... Oh, you know what? Look at that. It saved it for us. That's so cool. Can we rename them? Um, I'm not sure. But if I want to use it again, we have the plans. That's really nice. I like that a lot. Okay, so... Actually, maybe we will use that again. Let's load that. Let's verify that it's the correct design, because that's actually not correct. We got rid of these. Flight controls now in docking mode? What are you talking about? We had switched out those larger wings for smaller stabilizers. There we go. Just going to creatively call it the Mark II even though it's functionally identical to the Mark I. All right. Now, who is piloting? Where do we assign that? There's got to be a way, right? No. Let's not do that. Cancel. Staging looks good. Okay. Oh, Kerbal Manager. Okay, Bob, you had your chance. Jebediah Kerman. There you go. Okay. We're going to try launching again, this time with less premature ejecting of active components that we wanted to use. It actually kind of does. Oh, thank you, California. We can raise the desk while the ship also raises. What I need to do is figure out if there is an actual assigned key for pausing the game.
What camera do you have again? Oh, that's a good question. What even is it called? Uh, it's the Logitech Brio. Why, did it do something fancy? Or bad? And then, no, I don't want to make it space. It followed me when I stood... Seriously? Are you sure that wasn't just the fact that the camera is mounted on the desk which was raising? Okay. Keeping my hands away from the space bar. Now, what do we need to do? I want to go prograde, and then I guess I do want to actually start firing the engine. I don't know if we have enough fuel for a whole lot of maneuvering. I might need a Mark III with extra fuel tanks. Okay, I did it again, but that was what I was actually going to do anyway. Because, yeah, I don't have nearly enough fuel to achieve an actual orbit with this vehicle. So we're just going to follow it around and see how it goes. Oh, oh. Thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate that. Oh my god, look at that. They've even got freaking internal lighting inside the cockpit. Ugh, this is beautiful. And I keep trying to unpause by hitting spacebar again, so we've deployed the parachute even though it's way too early. So, let's see if we... Oh, <laughs> that's what I was afraid of. Bye-bye, parachute. <laughs> uh, let's revert to launch. Actually, let's not revert to launch. We'll revert to VAB. We're going to have to do something about the whole fuel situation, I think. I thought I was going to have enough, but clearly that's not working out. Okay. So, revert to VAB. Alright, so, let's see here. We're gonna ditch these. They can go away. I think... Oh, we actually do have the two tanks. Like, we could maybe do with more than two, though. So what are those? Those are... Uh, 
How do I get more information on an object once it's placed? We haven't played with hydrogen yet. A small but significant amount of liquid hydrogen. Rumors that this tank also floats slightly off the ground when full are completely unfounded. That's good to know. Okay, I guess it's got to be this Methalox fuel tank then. So we'll put that there and maybe actually... Maybe we'll put a larger one. Small but versatile Methalox engine features a full three degrees of thrust vectoring, making it a good choice for smaller rockets. Inspired when a barbecue grill trip tipped. There. <clears throat> we'll see how this goes. Let's check the staging. Uh, so we have no... So those first, then those, then that, then that, then parachute. Okay, so that's fine. It's impressive that they get it to balance like that. All right, Jeb, let's go. I love the countdown and the music. It feels very suitably epic. might have a problem now. I just realized we just added an enormous amount of extra weight to the ship. We're not going to get nearly as far, far up. We got about half the height. We're only into the middle atmosphere. Upper atmosphere, crossing over. It's still climbing. Oh, but the climb is starting to slow. Okay. Let's boost. We want to get to space again. Damn it, I did it again. Sorry, Jeb. <laughs> well, he's gonna make it to space at least.
Okay, we'll just revert back to launch again because that was very close to working. I just need to... I need to keep the commands in my head. I'm pretty sure I saw a little, you know, loading message the way they have, and it said never learning Eve. That's got to be throwing shade at Eve online. That's hilarious. All right. Let's try this again. Is it just me, or do those look like they are at different heights? I wonder if that's just... A... No, it doesn't matter the angle. They still look like they're at different heights. Which is weird, since I placed them with symmetry. we go. I'm keeping my hands away from the space bar this time. Yeah, we're not going to get too terribly high up. So we're going to engage the thruster. Now let's see what we can do about this. Actually, before we do that, let's go back here. starting to see one of the problems of using the airplane nose instead of a proper command capsule, and that is the command capsule includes the, um, the equipment needed to maneuver, and the plane cockpit does not. And wow, we've already burnt through all of the fuel. And it's... hang on. Nope, still not enough. So we're going to get way out there, but we're coming right back again. So we're going to have to redesign it, and we're going to have to put a reaction wheel in. And I just noticed, welcome back, people who had ads. Sorry about that. I completely missed it until we were six seconds from the end of the ad break. Where did we put the planet? Oh, there it is. Let's see if we can land successfully. Starting to hit the atmosphere. Oh, another problem. 
There's no heat shielding. Which, lucky for Jeb, doesn't appear to be a problem yet, but you can bet that's going to be coming. Heat doesn't exist in the game? Yeah. I, I He should be dead if it did, so I believe it. But it is another thing to keep in mind for later. that up. It's actually having a little bit of trouble with the ocean. That's interesting. Well, it's better when you just angle straight down on it. There we go. <laughs> okay, I assume that's going to improve eventually too. But uh, for now, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty weird, but it's good. Okay, so uh, where are we? Gear, brakes, brakes, whatever, brakes. We don't need brakes. Um, nope. Okay, 38 minutes, vessel launched, vessel landed. Oh, that one actually took an hour and a half. That's not bad. He went way out there. What was his highest speed? 14 meters per second over land, 2,221. Eight meters covered in ground distance. 133 kilometers total. Not as many Gs this time, I guess because uh, the ship weighed more. Nope, it's just an ocean. Early access, Haggis. It's early access. Okay, so... Let's recover. Mastery in motion. You can always be better. Wow, thanks. Okay, um... Let's go back to the VAB. So we're gonna pop back... Oops. No, oh, it's still the same one. Okay. We'll try just doing two of those. That's not what I wanted. Okay, that looks good. Except... We 
we need where is no that's ground thermal's not a bad idea though I know heat doesn't exist at the moment but even so um There we go. It's probably okay if the control unit gets fried. Oop. Nope. Can oop. That's the control. Let's swamp that around. There we are. So we've got control, we've got heat protection, we've got it all connected to eject. We still need an engine though. Try that one this time and see how it goes. And then we wanted our stabilizers too. Okay. Let's try saving this one. Existing saved vehicles to overwrite. We don't need that one. What? Ultra? That's really bizarre. I would ask if anyone else was thrown into another stream, but if they were, then they probably can't hear me. I have no idea, Ultra. Is it possible maybe you hit, like, a back button or something and ended up on somebody's stream that you were watching before? Okay, let's check the staging. Okay, we want these two at the same time. We don't want that there. So those, then that, then that, then that. And that. And we don't need that. Never seen this person in my life? That is really weird, Ultra. Only thing I can think of is an accidental click on something that ac made you unintentionally load the other stream somehow. Okay. So maybe now we'll be able to actually turn and maneuver once we're in space. Oh. Wow. Okay. It hadn't occurred to me that time was going to pass. That's really cool. Now we're doing a night launch. Oh, we're back with Bob. I guess that's okay. Bob can make this trip.
you know what? I still have no ability to maneuver. This is why I like to screw around. I learn very well this way. Oh, well, it's absolutely intentional. They had to program it that way. It, it's definitely intentional. I just find it interesting because it hadn't occurred to me that that might be the case. Still climbing. Nice. I don't think we're going to make it to space without burning again. You know, actually. We might. No, no. Oh, okay. That's not happening. the atmosphere that's keeping me from being able to maneuver. Okay, we're in space. And I still can't do anything. So I think we're going to revert back to the VAB. I probably need to read up a little bit more about the other control options. Okay, so, control stuff. The RC-001S is an autonomous remote guidance unit with a small, thin profile equipped with an internal battery and built-in reaction wheel. It is an excellent choice for return. Okay, that sounds more like it's a remote control than what I had in mind. Which maybe would not be such a bad idea for, you know, Jeb and Bill. But it's not really what I had in mind. I might just bite the bullet and go with a proper actual cockpit for a rocket instead of using the plain one. As much as I really love the plain one. Let's get rid of these. And we won't need that. We'll pop that on there and give it our standard parachute. <sighs> it looked so much nicer with the other one. Oh well. Okay, so what else do we need? We have no sciencey stuff we can do. Whoops. <laughs> Wrong size. Oh, that's not going to do it.
We'll see if those burn off or if they actually survive the trip. Okay. Bob just had a turn. Let's let Valentina go. We haven't sent her up yet. And we're going to try and launch pad two. For no specific reason other than I'm curious to see what the difference is. All right, not much of a difference. That's all right. Oh, let's uh, check. We've got two solid engines, then we eject the engines, then we get that engine, then we eject the whole thing, then we fire the parachute. So we're looking good. Maybe not the most convenient time to launch when our power is solar powered, but I guess we'll find out. Hmm. Still can't maneuver. Trying to put those lessons about gravity turns to use, and it's not happening. spacebar again accidentally. Well, can we maneuver the capsule at least? Oh, actually, I wonder... Oh, no, I can't maneuver the capsule. Maybe that... I wonder if that's a power issue, though. Also, I think I ejected the battery along with the rest of the ship, which is maybe not my best option anyway. Well, I mean, the bug could be with the way I've got the ship set up. I wouldn't put it past me. Because the WASD, they all worked fine in the, in the tutorial. It's only now that I'm in the game itself that I'm having this issue. Okay, we're falling back down. Sorry, Valentina. It wasn't responding to my command to do the stage separation either, to do the parachute. That's concerning. Not sure what to make of that. Hmm. Okay. 
I think what we're going to do is we're going to completely ditch this. Uh, all of this. Can I... And I'm going to see if some of their designs work as intended. Wow, that's a heck of a rocket. What are these? Those look like science modules. Are those payloads? What's in here? Am I wrong? That looks very much like it might be um, mystery goo. I mean, they're more spherical. Oh, no, they might be monopropellant. Oh. 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 Monopropellant and maneuvering thrusters. I wonder if that's what I needed. <laughs> that might be exactly what I needed, now that I think about it. Monopropellant, deep space engine, Venon, Xenon rather. The FLR-10 is a very small inline monopropellant tank, perfect for craft, requiring just a little RCS thruster boost every now and then. We're told they make excellent kettle drums. Okay, let's let's give this one a try and see how that reacts. This is not at all concerning. That's I'm sure that's perfectly fine. All right, Bob, you ready to go? I'm going to assume he's ready to go. Noticing right away, I still have no WASD control. So something weird is definitely going on. see where this takes us. Well, we're definitely well out into space.
I still have no direct control unless... I wonder if that's why. Nope. Hmm. Okay, well... We'll see where this takes us in a minute. We've got ads starting in just a few seconds, so I'm going to take a quick break. I might be a few minutes, three and a half to five minutes this time, and then I'll be back and we'll continue on. Uh-oh. My, aren't you the clumsy one? Because of your inability to walk without falling on your face, your helmet is now riding the elevator without you. You've blown your cover. The Sarians are shoot sure to shoot first and ask questions later. I don't know. They failed to notice my hands. Maybe they won't notice my... F No problem. A meteor strike has occurred. Avoid the impact site and head to shelter if any is available. I mean, I don't need to understand everything, but I can say I'm pr plenty confused. Did a compi just knock my jeep back? What the what happened there? show you exactly what I'm talking about. Hello. Yes, what is it? You didn't need that shoulder, did you? Uh, um. Oh, shit, shit. Whoops. <laughs> oh, no. Something's moving something around pretty good. Some kind of oh, that's a spider. Get out of here. You know, I'm actually starting to regret even putting on level one arachnophobia. The eight legs are kind of a nice giveaway that hey, there's a spider. <laughs> There you go. Arrow to the knee. Now you can no longer be an adventurer. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Oh my. Now you know why they wanted to close the hole behind you. You have become the unwilling victim of the dreaded cave squid. Tough luck. You know, I think that might very well be the very first time I have ever. Mass Effect is much bigger than just Shepard. Yes. 
ask what's in your mind. You got it. Out of the way, mission. There we go. Okay. This is kind of encouraging. How's everything looking on your end? I'm playing on ultra max everything set to the highest level it can possibly go to. It looks real good on my end. I do have um, I do have the resolution set to 1080. I'm playing on 1080. So I don't know, we'll see. Detonation. Oh, I forgot that detail. We're on a timer. Let's turn that on. Whoa. That was awfully close by. Oh. <laughs> I guess those are the quote-unquote dead Ewoks. Oh, you... Alright, I'm back. Are we winning space? Um... Sort of? We're encountering some early access issues, honestly. I don't seem to have any ability to really control the ship. I mean, I can launch it and I can do the staging, but... Oh shoot, speaking of staging, I just... <sighs> yeah, uh, you're supposed to be able to maneuver with WASD to make it uh, tilt-roll. Yaw, all that fun stuff, and absolutely nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Press T? No. It's doing something now, but I think that's just because RCS is turned off. I'm not actually hitting any buttons anymore. Yeah, it, that's stability mode. Not sure what's going on. Also not sure why it seems to be locked to this component, which shouldn't really still be attached. Something definitely seems a little bit weird. Not to mention the fact that I'm reasonably sure that should have been out of fuel some time ago.
Uh, nope, I can't do anything with this either. Reaction wheel is active. I don't know. That's real strange. <laughs> We're still actually moving farther away from the planet. I have to check map mode. See what's going on here. Uh, okay. One way that I can turn it, I guess, I can do that. I just can't do it with the keyboard, which is very weird and kind of awkward. Radial out, anti-normal, retrograde, radial in, normal. Maneuver, target, anti-target. Well, I have no control, so we're going to come in the way we come in. This is my only way of controlling. And once we get close enough, gravity's going to take over anyway. Like that. I tweeted out that I was going live, I speculated about space planes. Maybe we should investigate those, see if they control any better than the spacecraft do. I think I even saw one here. Thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate that. Welcome on in. The Ares K2 is a modernized version of the ever-popular Ares family of jets. Compact, sleek, maneuverable, and really fun to fly. Oh, and they've got... Oh, they have, they have a ground car. It's probably better than the ones I typically make. Jumping Flea. It was originally named after the carnival ride that we salvaged most of its parts from. It might not get us all the way to space, but it will definitely get us started. I wish we could read the rest of this. Scaled up version of the Curlington model rockets wildly popular children's RC toy modified for exploration and scientific research. Try to keep the late night drone racing around the KSC to a minimum. <laughs> I want to try, um, try that one. Let's load that. No, load. Come on. 
There we go. Oh, does that not need a pilot? I guess that's designed as a drone. Hey, whoa, I didn't tell you to go, but go. No, even with this, I have no ability to control it with the keyboard. We didn't need that wing. It was optional. That thing, we didn't need that either. That was decorative. Yeah, I'm impressed. I didn't think nearly as much of that was going to survive. Oh, this is going to make my rocket-powered golf cart stuff so much more fun once I can control stuff with the keyboard. <laughs> yeah, I was actually thinking that might be my next step, Mr. Soggy Roman. I think we're going to revert to VAB, then quit the game and come back. <laughs> These vehicles are so much more durable. Can you imagine in KSP-1 any of my creations surviving at that speed? Just the smallest little bump? They exploded at the slightest touch. That thing survived mostly intact. This is going to revolutionize the rocket-powered golf cart industry. Okay, let's quit without saving. We saved all the stuff that we meant to save. Controller plugged in Bill. Hello. Do you know me? We're talking about keyboards here. And keyboard is working. I just verified in Discord. We don't play con with controllers. My God. Controllers are always inferior in every circumstance to keyboard and mouse. This is known scientific fact. Okay. Okay. I can be reasonable. I, I can respect that clarification, Kellen, right? That's true. Oh, wow. Why are we... Okay. okay. So now we know the game autosaves periodically. Oh, hey. There you go. It was a temporary problem. I can do things. We can do stuff. We're going to revert to... Can we... No, wait. Why can I not revert? Okay, fine. Let's speed things up. Parachute deploys. Parachute actually does not tear off this time. That's good. Then it is customized for you. Yeah, see, that... That makes sense to me. I could accept that, Kalanray. I've never had a controller customized to me, though. Unless it happened to be a, you know, a remapped keyboard and mouse setup. Uh, 
I see you there, Ultra. When you make the ramen anything but al dente, there is a disturbance in the ether and things stop working correctly. I saw you start up KSP2, Ultra. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Let's go back to KSC. Okay. Now I'm really curious. I want to try this one. Because this thing looks sick. I love it. We're launching it. Oh no, multiplayer is going to come in quite late in the game, along with interstellar stuff, I'm sure. Okay, it's surprisingly slow to turn. Come on. Oh, semi self writing. Now, how did you do? There we go. <laughs> All right. It, it's got some issues. I like what they're doing with it, though. I like where they're going with this. One crucial oversight, they don't seem to have applied any lights anywhere. No, they don't have a whole lot in this yet, Mr. Soggy Ramen. They've basically just got, you know, a majority of the parts and then some from KSP-1 implemented in a similar kind of thing, but there's no career mode, there's no science yet. You can make stuff and you can fly it around and drive it around and apparently sail it around because they've now got boats, but that's about it. You, you can't do science, you can't go to other solar systems, you can't make colonies yet, you can't do multiplayer. This is so freaking cool. What are these components? MPC 250. That's not terribly descriptive. I'm sure there's probably a button for it in this too, but they don't seem to have actually installed lights, is the problem. I've already reverted back, it's fine. But the thing now is we can load up my other design and we can try it and see if I can actually do something with it the way I intended to before this whole problem cropped up. So we're gonna see about loading that. Is that the right one? Um. Actually, no. Let's go to an earlier version of it. How's that one? Yeah, let's do that one.
Let me just make a few small corrections because some of the observations I made are still valid. Oh, no, wait. I already added the reaction wheel. Okay, so we're good. What's your favorite kind of ethnic food? Mexican, Chinese, Italian, Middle Eastern, Antarctican. <laughs> You'll have to tell me about Antarctic food sometime. Uh, I would have to say Italian. I like a lot of different ones. Like, I love Mexican and I love Indian as well, but uh, give me spaghetti or lasagna and I'm pretty damn happy to say nothing of pizza. Oh, um... I feel like something may be missing here. And yet it's working anyway. How about you, California? And anyone else who feels like answering, what kind of food are you folks into? Your game keeps crashing. Oh, that sucks. Oop! Oh, 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 oh boy. Jello and ice chips, oh no. Yeah, that makes sense. I may have chosen a poor time to launch the parachute. Fortunately, the problem that I noticed is that nobody seems to be in the cockpit, so I don't know that we really need the parachute. see if it ends up tearing off or something. Oh my god, look at the space views. This is... I love this game. This is so cool. And it's gonna be one of those ones that just gets better and better. So I gotta do something about the way that the engines eject. Bulgogi, I don't know what that is. Thai yellow curry sounds really good, provided it has no seafood. Really authentic hummus. Had it in Israel. Okay, I, I don't know if I've ever had hummus, actually. Italian, Mexican, Chinese, not sure if you've even had any others. Chinese, always a favorite, of course, too. And some Japanese food, although I have to be exceptionally picky about Japanese food because so much of it is seafood, which is just a no-go. American comfort food is the best? Well, if it's comfort food, then obviously. Yeah, I, I tend to like those, Ultra. I used to get unbelievably sick of Japanese food when I used to work in the game industry, though, because people always wanted to go to the Japanese restaurants, and my selections were so limited. So I always ended up getting the... Like the... Um, uh, what do they call it? I don't even remember now, but... Basically, I had one thing that I could eat. 
Korean marinated beef. That sounds really good. Okay, let's speed this up. We don't have to sit and watch this in real time. Like pretty much any cuisine, but Moroccan is your favorite. Been on a French kick recently, though. Interesting. Had it in a hole in the wall when you were stationed in South Korea several years ago. It was amazing. Oh, that sounds really good. I haven't had a whole lot of Korean food. I've tried pho, and I honestly really was not a fan. Although, it's always possible, of course, that it was just the way that particular place did it. I've only had it the one time, so I can't really say for sure that I just don't like it, period. Okay. Oh, ads, right. Oh, shoot. so creepy. Sniper now. ambush shotgun, damn what? it. Oh shit, not now. Add snipers to the list, apparently. You can do it. Make your forebears proud. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I'm back. Let's try a minor tweak of the design of this thing. We're gonna pop this back into symmetry mode. And we're going to pop these lower down so there's a better chance of the main rocket escaping. We are also gonna take these off. What are those? Those are the solid fuel boosters, right? <clears throat> that doesn't look right. Oh, uh, you've had no sleep the past few nights? Yes, Ultra, please go get some good rest. We'll give that a shot. I hope you're able to get some better rest, Ultra. Thank you so much for stopping in and hanging out for so long. I really appreciate it. Let's ditch those. Have a fantastic night, and I will hopefully catch you again real soon. Okay, there's no way this can possibly go wrong, is there? I think this is good. Now, we do have to check this, because... Yeah, we need another stage there. And actually, I guess, technically speaking, I should probably decouple those. Oh, 
Greed detaches those, then that fires, then that fires. Yeah, okay. Now it looks good. Oh, no, no. Wrong button. Save. Launch. Okay. Well, we haven't exploded. This is a plus. We did forget. We, we don't have a pilot, but we don't seem to need one. Somehow. Yeah, I think the rocket is so tall. I'm actually having... Oh, yeah, I was... Oh, oh God. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, I do have the ability to control it, just really not well. <laughs> I think I've made a design that really wants to go straight up, and if you turn it in any other direction, you're taking your life in your own hands. <laughs> Fortunately, there is no life to be in anyone's hands, so we're okay, but yeah. At least the staging seems to be working okay. wonder if I should give it small wings with the ability to adjust the lift and whatnot. Oh, okay. Well, it's a good thing there's nobody on board because we lost our parachute. Free? Yes, California. Healthy? No, not, not at all. Not at all. I'm impressed at how well it's maintaining its stability here in light of its rapid descent. Boom. Okay. Well, let's go back to the VAB on this one again. I wonder if that maybe could be because I don't have a pilot. Give that a try. Okay, let's see. Who wants to volunteer? Uh, 
Oh no. What happened to Bob and all the others? Where is Jeb? They can't be dead. All right, Tim C. Kerman, I guess you're up. Wow. Okay, so that is the reaction wheel. Heat shield decoupler. So that all looks right. So if I were to take that and add another... I wonder if that would help with maneuverability at all. Okay, let's pop those off. And we're going to look at our aerodynamic options. <clears throat> Control surface wings. That might be a little too large. That's probably, yeah, not really ideal. don't actually want to do that. Let's try this. Oh, that's what they were using on the other ship, the one I loaded in. It's because those are control surfaces. All right. straight for a while. I'm not going to push. I've already turned us a little bit to the east. Just a touch, probably less than one degree, honestly. Trying to be 
very, very careful. Trying coasting up. Damn it. I did it again. I separated instead. But that worked a lot better. I was able to do a little bit of a gravity turn. Not very much, because I lost my piece too quickly. But um, I was able to eject everything without destroying the ship. And I was able to maintain control a lot better. So I'm going to call that success. Now let's see if we can get Tim C. Kernan here, or Kerman here, back down again safely and alive. Nope, the middle thruster is liquid fuel for orbital maneuvering and stuff. That's why we have the side thrusters. They're the lift to get us into space, or at least the vast majority of the way. To the atmosphere we go. Court has separation anxiety. Wow. What do you mean by onion? There we go. Oh, maybe the reason I don't have any of my Kerbals is because I keep not recovering them. I didn't think I would need to, though. Let's go to the tracking station and see if we do have anybody out there. Crew, Tim C. Kerman, okay. Even as rockets and probes escape its atmosphere for deep space exploration, there is still much 
to appreciate about this vibrant world. Its vast oceans, deserts, forests, and plains coat the surface in lively beauty. Its moons, noon and minmus. There's two moons? I didn't know that. Swirl silently above it. Kerbal kind is fortunate to call this pale blue planet their home. Okay. Onioning is layering the thrusters. It involves using fuel pipes. I don't know if you even can do that in two. It's quite possible you can, but I would not know. Okay, no, we already did that. We don't want to do that. Okay, now let's have a look at that little plane that we tested with before. Let's see how that one works. That was a pretty spectacular explosion. Eating the old dusty trail? All right, Mr. Soggy Roman, have fun. Have a good night. Thank you for stopping in. One day I will make an attempt to play these games reasonably properly. Alright, let's build up some more speed before we try taking off this time. Or maybe this is just a cursed design that we shouldn't try using. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> clear this away. Um, how do we do that? There we are. Actually, no. We're going to start with this guy. be a little big.
Even that might be a little big. Can we not? No. All right, fine. We're going to start with that. come down and we're going to add this on top somewhere. That looks good. Payloads. Wow, that's a very big cargo bay. I don't think that's going to work. I guess one thing, oh, rotate and translate, that might be incredibly helpful. that looks so ghostly, but we're going to leave it there. Okay, ground. Let's see. We want proper wheels. doesn't no 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 what the heck what Try that version of symmetry mode. All right, um, game.
You do not seem to be respecting symmetry mode. I'm very confused. What the hell? Square Trust Junction. Extremely versatile square junction truss and the cornerstone product of Bob's Girders. It is literally the cornerstone of our snack vending machine. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. Is there something else I want to use instead? I guess I could do that. Oh, and we have ads in progress. Enjoy the lurk, Jarek. Have a fantastic evening. Thank you for stopping in. This is a little perplexing, but I'll do what I can with it. The TMPXS is a very small multi-point connector. While it may be referred to as the not Rockomax Micronode, Dinkelstein's Kerman's Construction Emporium swears there was no corporate espionage. That's quite large, actually. Why does this... Oh... No. It's still not respecting it. I don't get this. That's really weird. Okay, what happens if I just put wheels directly on this now with the... With the thing. The stuff. The things and the stuff. Okay, that appears to work. But man, that looks tiny. Electrical. I guess there are some things that it just does not seem to be able to, um, that's a little large. It doesn't seem to be able to mirror, which is a little unfortunate. So we can store and generate power as long as it's daylight. pop one of these in too. So that even at night we'll have a little bit of power. Uh, 
And I suppose we might need some sort of... Oh, lights would be good. Um... Lovely. There we go, ladder. That does <laughs> I'm not sure this is quite what I had in mind. Let's see if I can get away without having the ladder, since that seems to be a little awkward. Um, oh, we lost our previous pilot too, what the heck? Oh, Bill Kerman is back, what the heck? Welcome back, Bill. Maybe we didn't lose our other pilots. Oh, the launch pad was probably not my best option. Well, I have some level of control. Uh, no, don't revert. Let's go. We're going to revert back to there and we're going to pick a more appropriate launch site. Because clearly that's not optimal for a ground vehicle. We can't really go anywhere. Okay, we want to go runway two. I'm very curious about the boat launch capabilities because I don't really see many pieces in here that would be suitable for building any kind of a boat. I don't know if maybe that's a lack of imagination on my part speaking or something, but I'm having real difficulty imagining how that would work. Uh, can we not launch? Bill Kerman? Hello? How about runway one? No? How about that? No? Okay, so X toggles lights, apparently. Or not. Engineer's report. Vessel has a command pod and no parachute. It's a car. It's not going that high up. Command pod may not survive curb and landing. It's not really meant to, buddy. Okay. Trip planner, not necessary. Why can we not launch? What is wrong? Can we not do the tracking station thing? I guess not. Oh, now I... Okay, this... <laughs> this might be another case where I've got to reload the game, because now I can't even launch at the launch pad. So we're gonna... We're gonna call this the drive safe, because I'm feeling creative. And I'll just restart the game real fast.
All right, let's see what we get here. Oh, great. Tim is still on his way down. Let's speed this up. Oh, uh, we're at 16, so we can deploy. And then we can speed up. I guess if we recover them, maybe there's a period of inactivity where they have to decompress, sometimes literally, and then we can use them again. That might explain why we have a bit of a crew rotation going on. Oh, yeah, we still have the heat shielding. Although with the parachute located here, that's probably not doing us all that much good. even if there were heat in the game at this point. Uh, okay, let's recover. And now we're going back to the VAB. Chadwell. Wait. What? This is not the state that I left this vehicle in. Excuse me, game. That's going there. Electrical. that there and we needed batteries I'm gonna stick a couple of those on good Good. There we go. Now, what else do we need? Some sort of cargo system is good. Chadwell, excellent. He is our pilot. And we don't want the launch pad, we want the runway. There we go, yes. So, yeah, early days, early access. Okay, I don't think we're going to be setting any land speed records with this. And it's not exactly a graceful turner. I wonder if we can mess with the wheels and the turning and all that kind of stuff.
Also, is there supposed to be... I'm trying to remember if there's a... Um, oh. Yes, there is a break. All right. That is good. Let's recover. And now we're going back to VAB. Uh, VAB? No? There. This is going to be... Yeah, this is the same state. Actually, that might not be the worst thing ever. Let's... Oop. Nope. Ah. Okay. Um, let me see. Launch assembly... Parts manager... Ground... Oh, nice. Okay. Auto friction control, steering enable, invert steering. That's what I was looking for. All right, so. For that one, we want to invert steering. And for that one, we want to invert steering. That one we don't. And that one we don't. Right, perfect. Suspension. Man, there's a lot of stuff you can customize with those. Alright, I am curious about how that's going to work, though. So, let's take this and we're going to... Uh, just going to put that there. And actually, no, we're not. We're going to put that there. Where are you? Command. I want to put this more central. want our generator back here. We want our batteries. Right there. I won't bother with the cargo. This is just stuff to make it run. lights there. I'm going to try saving again. And launch. Still not exactly a speed demon, but it's moving around pretty well. I do seem to have completely sabotaged its ability to steer. This is fun.
Okay, I think we're gonna have to recover. Let's go back to... Uh, it still won't let me go to VAB. Alright, I think we're gonna go back to rocketry. <sighs> I don't have a saved version of the one thing that I did there. Let's try... Modular hub? Pre-built to act as a central hub for a large space station. Okay, we have to look at that. Oh man, look at that. How do you even get that into orbit? What the heck? I don't recognize half of these pieces. Stack separator. Radial decouplers. Docking ports, why did I, oh man. The Clampatron is a small docking port designed to attach to any other docking port of the same diameter. This includes shielded inline and MK2 variant or Mark II variants. Oh, that's how you see more. It's also just large enough for a Kerbal helmet to fit through, making it a vast improvement. Oh my god. Clampatron Jr. is a very small docking port that will attach to a docking port of the same size. It can create an airtight seal between two crafts. While the port may have been cobbled together from a small serving hatch, it is just large enough for a Kerbal to fit through. So I guess you could technically launch that if you put a large enough engine under it with a fuel tank. Would you be able to? Let's see if we can launch this thing. We're going to need four boosters for that, I think. Or maybe we just need the one. also make it possible to eject. Except, hang on. We are going to need maneuvering capability.
We need to decouple that too. So let's put that there. And we'll put that there. And there's no way this can possibly go at all wrong. This is perfectly fine. There we go. Oh, hang on. Maybe line it up with the stuff that's already on here. That looks better, I think. <laughs> Aerodynamics. We need... Do we have any kind of... couple that too. That's the last thing to decouple. That's the first. Plus we want that to go off at the same time. Oh, actually no. Error. Uh, we want that to go off at the same time as that. Okay, so the, that one goes, then that one goes, then we need that one to go. Wait, that's the liquid. Then that one. Then that one. Right, okay. And we don't need that. Crew. Guzman. This is totally fine. This is not any kind of problem whatsoever. This is going to work perfectly. Jinxing it. This is actually turning out pretty okay. Oh, God, look at the wobble. Oh boy. Hang on, we have ads in progress. I'm going to pause and I'll be back after they're done. Oh, buddy is over there. No. No, sir. No. No.
Gristle is still alive after all this. Oh man, he's got that whole walking through the explosion thing down. I still say, though, that the Dark Souls games and Elden Ring and all them, this is the difficulty that they aspire to reach, but haven't yet. Sisters the Humankind Odyssey tasks you with guiding the... Oh my god, it's Guybrush Threefoot. <laughs> well, that was, that was pretty close to a good plan. Pack-led, my god. Seriously, you can be pack-led? Rigelian, Saurian, Tellarite, Trill, Vulcan, and Alien. Wait, what? Alien, as opposed to... <laughs> Family loses 15... Okay, guys. So far, I have... Not... I, I, I have not accidentally done any of the staging. So we're almost out of fuel on this first booster. We're also already almost in space. So I think we're doing okay on our lift capacity here. Okay, first stage separation. Let's keep boosting. But just for a little bit. And now I'm gonna cut. And I'm gonna pause. And I'm going to go to the map screen, and I want to see where we are and how we're looking. All right. Um, I'm probably going to have to do the tutorial again a few times. Actually, you can do the tutorial at any time, can't you? Let's do... Let's do this one again. I just want to refresh my memory because I'm still a little fuzzy on a lot of this stuff. For more than a couple of minutes, you'll need to get to orbit. An object is in orbit when it's moving sideways so quickly that even as gravity causes it to fall, it keeps missing the ground. As long as that object isn't slowed down by anything, it follows the same path every time it goes around the body it's orbiting. Forever. If that object is a Kerbal, it is recommended that they bring lots of snacks. So since your goal is to move horizontally at a high speed, why not launch sideways? On Kerbin, the atmosphere is like a thick soup. You waste a lot of fuel trying to fly through it horizontally. By launching vertically, you cut through the thickest part of the atmosphere as quick as possible. Most orbital rockets begin tilting toward the horizon soon after they leave the launch pad. This maneuver, called a gravity turn, uses the planet's gravity to turn the ship and reduces the amount of fuel needed to achieve a stable orbit. When launching near the equator, your gravity turns should point toward the east since your vehicle gets a free boost from the planet's rotation. Thanks, planet. Once a vehicle is moving quickly enough that its arc will take it above the atmosphere, it shuts down its engines and coasts to space. Once it nears the top of that arc, the vehicle needs to fire its engines a second time to keep itself from falling back down to the planet. Doing this turns that arc into a nice big circle. Congratulations! You've missed the ground! Okay, I think I remember. I think I remember. 
let's do the next one though because that's where I think you actually do it and that'll be a lot more helpful when you're making a rocket Anytime we intend to drop an empty stage after using all of its fuel, we connect it to the stage above it using a decoupler. A de add that decoupler to the bot. We need to attach a larger, more powerful lower stage to the bottom of your rocket. To keep things simple, I've whipped up a new lower stage in another workspace. All right. You can out in the real world. This list would show. Oh, now that the lower stage has been merged into your current, perfect. Merging is a very powerful tool. Okay, so it was not the next one, but they got us there. Space rockets sometimes need an extra boost. In a rare case of rocket scientists naming something well, he's a we'll start by attaching four radial decouplers that will eject the spent boosters when they're great. Now when you place a part on one side of your rocket, three good. Now attack perfect. Now you've got four radial decouplers exactly where they need to be. Let's attach those solid fuel boosters. Since you're still in 4x symmetry mode, simply attach this booster to one of the decouplers. Great job. You've finished your orbital rocket. I guess we're doing the entire thing then. I guess that's all right. begins at the bottom of the staging stack. Uh, you want your boosters and main engine to fire together for maximum thrust. The solid fuel boosters are currently in the second stage. If we don't change anything, the boosters will ignite late and detach themselves at the same time. Hey, this Greeny, how's it going? For everybody. So Here, let's move let me get you a shout out. Quite a few crashes. It's really fun, though. I'm trying to see if I can launch a piece of a space station and get it into orbit. No problem, Greeny. No problem. How's your day going? How's your weekend going? Or dare I ask? Uh, okay, so we want this down here. Your solid fuel boosters burn very hard and very fast. So they will run out of fuel first. Three events? Oh, Even God. Even though your main engine and boosters will activate at the same time, you want to drop the empty boosters before you drop your main engine. Now move all four radial decouplers from stage four. To all done. Your remaining stages are set up so that stage four will activate. I'm just doing one of the uh, orbital tutorials again because in order to get the piece of the space station to stay up there, I need to know how to do orbits, and I'm a little fuzzy on that. So I'm hoping there will be no crash with this. Golf tournament, a birthday party, and an event. Right. Dinner and show thing. Oh, boy. In this flight, you're going all the way to orbit. I'll walk you through the process of launching, executing a gravity turn to get moving sideways, coasting to orbital altitude and doing a final burn at the top of your arc to establish a stable orbit. Before we begin, let's talk about the nav ball. At launch, you want all your engines at maximum thrust, which means you need to... You can see your main throttle here. Okay. Left shift, drag... Your fuel levels are visible within the staging stack. Right now, you can see that your main engine and four boosters are all topped off and ready to rumble. Fuzzy orbits are fun to pet. Reasonable. Fly straight up. I'll check back in with you once those boosters are empty. Good luck. Okay, they are almost empty now. All right, solid fuel boosters 
are empty. Let's drop them. It's time to start your gravity turn. A gravity turn. First, we need to get to 10,000 meters. Oh, okay. You're going to yaw towards the east so that the target marker is in the center of the nav ball. Your vessel and nav ball should look like this example video if you're performing the gravity turn correctly. Way to make Kerbin's gravity work for you. You're now on track to establish an orbit. Your current stage's fuel is empty. Let's drop it and activate your deep space engine. Great job! Your rocket is on its way to orbit. As you gain experience, you can make your gravity turns more efficient by starting to tilt your rocket soon after liftoff. Adjusting course with a series of small corrections instead of one big one will leave you with a lot more fuel when you get to orbit. Turning immediately after launch requires a very stable rocket. So if you ever have trouble keeping the pointy end up, you can try the simplified wait and turn method we use today. Okay, so that's... I, I don't think I did my gravity turn quite correctly, but that's okay. It was neat, like a band that travels and does Motown and a whole bunch of music. Actually pretty easy for you. Still a lot, but easy. Oh, that's good. After the week you've had, you could use easy. Right now, we're on a ballistic trajectory. If no further adjustments are made, your rocket will eventually fall back down to the ground. Our objective is to turn this arc into an orbit. The process of turning your trajectory into a circular orbit is called circularization. Partial credit to the rocket people on that one. It does have the word circle in it, but it's really hard to say. It's not that hard to say. When planning and executing orbital maneuvers, you'll want to switch to map view where you can see every part of your current trajectory. Okay. The blue arc passing through your vehicle is its current trajectory. This the is where we are now. will follow if you don't touch the controls anymore. Our goal is to make that arc into a circular orbit. After you've coasted nearly to the top of this arc, you're going to point forward, and then you're going to ignite your engine. If you time this burn right, you'll never quite get to the top of the arc as it'll keep widening in front of you until it wraps all the way around the planet. Let's break that down a little more. The top of your arc has a helpful tag in map view. It's called the apoapsis, abbreviated as AP. You're going to max out your throttle before you pass this point. Okay, so we have to throttle up before we get to apoapsis. We're paused at just before the apoapsis. We want to go faster in the direction we're already moving. So we need to make sure our rocket is pointed forward. And There's that's what we need prograde for. Called the prograde marker. That represents your forward direction. Use the stability assist system, or SAS, to point your vessel at that marker. Okay, so let's see this visually. You're all lined up and ready to go. The next step is to go max throttle. It can take time for your arc to fully expand into an orbit. If you look closely at where your trajectory meets the ground, you'll see it moving toward the horizon. Once your trajectory reaches all the way around the planet, you'll see another marker on your orbit. This is the periapsis, or PE, the lowest point in your orbit. It'll always live on the opposite side of your orbit from the apoapsis, or highest point. By burning prograde near your apoapsis, you increase the altitude of your periapsis, the lowest point on your orbit. So that doesn't apply yet because we haven't achieved orbit. We're still going to end up crashing on the ground until this goes away. But we've still got fuel. Our orbit is taking shape. And that goes around and around and around until there. Okay, your orbit is fully out of the atmosphere. Cut the throttle. You did it! You're in orbit! 
This is what I'd usually tell you to look under your seat in the simulator, where you'd find a delicious celebratory treat. Sadly, since the vending machine in the Astrodynamics lab broke down, it has gotten very difficult to hide snacks anywhere at KSC. Feel free to take a moment to admire your first orbit. In a way, you've given yourself a mind snack, which is way better than the edible kind anyway. Right? Right? <laughs> okay. Okay. That was the one I really needed. I think I've got kind of a handle on how it works now. I think I really need to do it outside of the tutorial to nail it, but we'll see how this goes. Okay, uh, pause. Map. Where are we? We're over here. Clearly, I didn't do a very good job with my whole gravity thing. Okay, so let's keep going. We're gonna go prograde, so we're pointed the way we want to go, and then once I get to about here, I'll start firing up. Actually, I could use a little more distance and speed, so let's do now. Oh, that is getting bigger. It is moving. It didn't look like it was, but I think it is. Except we do seem to be... Um... Did I miss a step? We don't want to be turning down towards the planet. Something's not quite right.
Clearly, I have some practicing to do. This is not working. Uh, no, it shouldn't have. I haven't made any changes there. <laughs> okay, reverting to VAB. Yeah, I need to work on my orbits. I need to work on my orbits. No, it's still there, and I still see you in it, Greeny. So if something is uh, hiding it from you, maybe Discord needs a restart or something. I don't know. I'm going to try launching this again. Oh. Or maybe... Okay, it looks like the launching isn't working, so I think the game has decided not to work again, which means it needs to be restarted, but it's already just like a shade before 4 a.m., and my eyes are kind of burning. This might be a sign that it's time to wrap up. Yeah, I would try restarting Discord, Greeny, because you are still showing up as in there. And like I said, I haven't made any changes. So you should be able to access it, unless Discord itself is acting up. I think we're going to quit for now, but we're going to play more of this sometime soon. I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. I was thinking we might do some more Subnautica tomorrow, because I really want to, you know, that's kind of my focus game at the moment. I would like to... Uh, not Subnautica itself, Subnautica Below Zero, that is. I would really like to get that one completed. I am very tempted, though, to maybe very temporarily supersede that with some more No Man's Sky, because I would like to finish that, uh, the expedition for that one as well. And that one, even though we've got six weeks, it's still time limited. So we'll have to see. But I'll worry about that tomorrow. Speaking of Discord, that's where I'm likely to let people know what's going on with that for now. Let's see who we've got online that we can maybe go raid. Hmm. All right, so I'm looking at my list, and in order from fewest to greatest number of viewers... Looks like Pallet Box is playing some scum. I don't know anything about that game. Kismet is playing Valheim. If we want to continue our thing of uh, visiting people that we've never raided before, I'm following somebody named Eon Raptor, who is playing some Kerbal Space Program 2 and probably doing a better job of it than I am. <laughs> So we could go visit them. Beyond there. Oh, Simcopter 1 is on. He's playing Kerbal Space Program. He's not playing Kerbal Space Program 2, though. He's playing the first one. He was playing that last night as well. And uh, he's just learning the ropes. It's his first time playing it. So we could go check and see on his progress. And that looks like that's about it for this evening. Oh, I promise you it has not disappeared, Greeny. The mod stuff section is still there. And no changes have been made. I'll poke at it after stream, but something's got to be wrong. 
and I haven't made any changes that would make it a, a thing on the stream itself or the the Discord itself. New people, you say? Let me load up the channel and see what's going on over there. So I don't know, maybe something actually is going wrong with Discord or something's happened with your client or I don't know. I'm just waiting on a short ad here. Okay, I can't really tell what he's up to. It looks like he's got some kind of uh, liquid engine burn going on. Yeah, maybe maybe the client. All right, let's go. Let's go give this new person, Eon Raptor, a try. I'll get you the link. Oh, uh, let me snooze upcoming ads too. There we go. All right. Okay, so that is Eon Raptor's link. Let me get you the raid call. Here at the Library of Lore, we use Library Raid. You've been bookmarked with the heart emote and the wave emote of the channel. If you're a sub, if you are not a sub, use the Twitch Raid and the Tomb Raid emote. In either case, sub or non-sub, please feel free to use any emote you feel is fun and appropriate for a raid. If you have emotes of your own, if you have emotes from another streamer, or maybe if you have... <laughs> wow, it's the smallest rocket I've ever seen. It's amazing. Um... If you have emotes from uh, maybe Twitch themselves, feel free to copy the raid message, arrange the emotes you want to use the way you want them to appear, it'll all be good in my book. So let's go give Eon Raptor a raid, see what's up with them, see what's going on with their game of uh, Kerbal Space Pro Program 2, see what they're all about, maybe make a new friend, and I will be back tomorrow night, possibly with Subnautica, maybe with No Man's Sky, either way, no matter what I end up playing, you know it's going to be a good time. So, uh, yeah, I hope to see you back here for that and over in Eon Raptor's channel as well. So have yourselves a wonderful rest of your night, day, evening, whatever it is where you are in the world. And I will catch you again real soon. Bye for now. <laughs> wow. Yeah, don't forget to clip, guys. I want some good Halloween clips for October this year. When I something happens to me or I do stuff. I'm clipping myself when I think of it, but... Oh, my God. Maybe if I run real fast, we can just clear right through there. Okay. Okay, where the heck did they hide the house? Is this the house here? Okay, this is not the house. Where do we live? What the heck? Did I take a wrong turn? Nope, not there. I am probably the first person in the history of... Oh, maybe it's this way. Harold is beating me for Suzerain of Laventa. Irritating. Yeah, you know, I'll work on Stockholm. He can have Laventa. Very nice. <laughs> wow! <laughs> They're not joking at all. Holy crap! <laughs> Unlocked eel trap. Eels are a reliable source of food if not overfished. Unlocks more stuff. 